For the last few months, the island nation of Sri Lanka has been staring at uncertainty. The country's president, Gotapaya Rajapaksa's rule, has drawn to a close following a people's uprising. Sri Lankans have been struggling with soaring inflation, shortages of basic amenities, including food and fuel. They have been facing daily power cuts. The country has gone bankrupt with no foreign currency left. Bad policy, bad politics and corruption led to a severe economic crisis and a country seething with anger. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has departed and Ranul Vikramasinghe has taken over as the acting president. The country is likely to get a new president on the 20th of July, but right now there is a potential power vacuum in the country. It needs a functioning government to tackle the financial crisis. An economic crisis triggering a political chaos. This scenario is not just limited to Sri Lanka today. From Asia to Europe to Africa, several countries are slipping into disarray. Within South Asia, another country is struggling with a serious economic problem. That's Pakistan. The country is cash starved. Inflation has been rising. The currency is losing value and external debt servicing is rising. Its foreign reserves are depleting fast. Last month, the State Bank of Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves fell to single digits. The country has pinned its hopes on the IMF package. The worsening financial situation is pushing the Shahbaz Sharif government to the edge. Sharif's coalition partners are miffed. Some allies have been criticizing the government's decisions in the parliament, claiming they were not being taken on board in important decision making. The ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan, who Shehbaz Sharif blames for emptying the coffers, has also been on the offensive, taking on the government over its inability to deal with the financial crisis. The situation is, in Europe is also turbulent. In the UK, Boris Johnson is, is on his way out. The Tories are hunting for a new party leader and Britain is waiting to get a new Prime Minister. There are several factors that led to Johnson's fall, including a series of sleaze scandals and, of course, the party gate row. But rising cost of living was also among the top ones. Britain's former finance minister, Rishi Sunak, who is now in the prime ministerial race, had quit from the position over scandals plaguing the Johnson cabinet. The new finance minister, Nadim Zahavi, has inherited a crisis-hit economy. The worsening cost of living crisis is pushing the UK economy into recession. Earlier this month, UK inflation hit a 40-year peak of 9.1%. And the level is set to hit double figures this year on soaring energy and food prices. In Italy as well, an economic slowdown has led to a political crisis. Ten years after Prime Minister Mario Draghi pledged to do whatever it takes to save the euro, the country is in the midst of a debt crisis and Draghi has offered to step down. The coalition partner, Five Star Movement, is saying that it is against the government's economic aid package and that enough has not been done by Draghi to tackle the cost of living crisis. The escalating political crisis coming as the country stares at a risk of recession. In the Baltic, Estonia is battling a similar crisis. In the latest, the president has asked the prime minister to form a new government after she tendered the resignation of one of her one-party minority cabinet, ending the political stalemate. The political crisis triggered after coalition parties in the government had substantial differences over spending amid increasing cost of living. The inflation rate in Estonia is the highest in the 19-nation eurozone. The annual inflation hit 22% in June this year. High energy prices are one of the main causes of inflation in the Baltic nation. On to Africa now. The once flourishing West African country of Ghana has turned to the International Monetary Fund for support. It is seeking a bailout as angry citizens take to the streets, protesting against high inflation and weak growth. The protesters say they are trying to wake up a sleeping president. On to South America now. Last week, Argentina's economy minister resigned and deepening, um, amid deepening tensions with the government and soaring inflation. 
Guzman had led negotiations, uh, negotiations with the IMF to restructure the country's $44.5 billion debt. The internal divisions within the coalition government pushed Guzman to step down, which escalated the political crisis for the debt-laden country. Though Argentina has a new economy chief, the economy is still in tatters. Inflation is spiraling, markets are tumbling, and the pressure on the peso is only mounting. The World Bank says for many countries, recession will be hard to avoid. It blames global supply chain disruptions, the pandemic, and the war in Ukraine for the current economic crisis across countries. And this economic crisis, cutting across borders, has sharpened the domestic political fault lines. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.